considered within your party and appealing or popular within the nation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, if New Hampshire is the avatar for what independent voters want and would choose, uh, you know, given the option, given the fact that anyone could play mm -hmm. in that independent side, uh, Nikki Haley beat Donald Trump among independents by something like 40, vo for, you know, 40 percentage points. Folks, welcome back to 8 Point Filter. Listen to today's episode. We're going to go over a couple things that have to do with the media, Donald Trump, and Nikki Haley. We just saw the New Hampshire primary results come in, and Trump handedly put Nikki Haley down once again. And we're going to go over some clips from that night, as well as the media coverage on MSNBC, mine and your favorite, Joy Reid and her team. From Breitbart, MSNBC's O'Donnell, New Hampshire primary, a very bad night for Donald Trump. 42% of the vote against the sitting president, Lyndon Johnson, who also had a write-in campaign. Johnson didn't bother to have his name on the ballot, just like Biden. Uh, both of them ran unofficial uh, write-in campaigns. So, uh, so Dean Phillips got completely crushed, didn't come close to the threshold. Uh, you know, if Gene McCarthy had gotten 20% in 1968, that would have been the end. No right. one would have talked about it again. Bobby Kennedy probably would have rethought his plan to get into the race after seeing how strong LBJ was. So Joe Biden demonstrates this enormous strength in, in New Hampshire tonight. And then you have Trump showing a much greater weakness against a credible challenger. And it, it depends on how you want to look at Trump. He wants to be called president in court and everywhere. So let's call him president just for this moment. <laughs> when a president is on the ballot in the New Hampshire primary, you're supposed to win everything. You're not supposed to face a serious challenge. And when you do, you lose. A couple points there. One, they say, oh, President Trump wants to be called President Trump. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but former presidents usually still get referred to as President so-and-so. Like, uh, when I talk about Obama, I say President Obama, even, even though I did not like President Obama. President Bush, you still give them the respect of that. But the Democrats have moved so far away from actual reality and customs that now they're picking on little things like that. Like, oh, he wants to be called Trump, so therefore we're going to slam him from wanting to be called Trump. Just because there was so much contention around the 2020 election and their ultimate disdain for him, they're just incapable of keeping in check in a professional setting whatsoever. But then again, whoever called MSNBC a professional setting. He also talked about Dean Phillips, the number one kind of challenger, I guess you could say, to Joe Biden on the ticket, because Dean Phillips was on the ticket, Joe Biden was the writing candidate. But Dean Phillips actually made an interesting point on CNN, and I want you to hear, take a look. We have a crisis of participation. And I gotta tell you guys, I went to a Donald Trump rally a couple nights ago, never been to one. Uh, I had an event across the street. I saw the line of people waiting in the cold for hours. And I thought, what the heck? You know, I'm going to be a leader who actually invites people, doesn't condemn them. Met probably 50 Trump people waiting in line. Every single one of them, thoughtful, hospitable, friendly. All of them so frustrated that they feel nobody's listening to them but Donald Trump. A diverse crowd, people who had never been to a Trump event before. My party is completely delusional right now. So anybody who's ever talked like that on the Democratic side usually does not do well. I mean, so the first person that comes to mind, actually, when I hear Dean Phillips talking like this was in the California recall election. A Democratic challenger to Gavin Newsom was Meet Kevin. He's a financial YouTuber, entrepreneur, and he talked a lot about this becoming more of a JFK Democrat, trying to bridge the gap, understanding the other side, where I believe... A lot of Republicans currently try to do that to the left, but the left will never reciprocate that. They view the Republicans and modern conservatives now through this lens of you are a redneck, you are, and that's, and that's all they really are. They're just these uneducated, ignorant rednecks. But as we could see from the past, these uneducated rednecks, quote unquote, were able to beat Hillary Clinton when it was technically Hillary Clinton's time. Like she was the person who was put up in order to do this. Dean Phillips, I have to give a tremendous kudos to him for actually trying to look across and understand what's going on. And to his credit, I think he does make a good point that the Democratic Party is delusional in that sense because they do buy what the media sells them on mainstream media sites nonstop. That's all they do. They talk about Republicans and conservatives in a certain way that is not going to advance the country. You need to understand the people you disagree with.
And MSNBC in this panel does not understand that one iota. There is no president who faced a serious challenge in the New Hampshire primary who then won in November. And so this is a, a very bad night for Donald Trump looking at the pattern of presidents in New Hampshire primary situations who face very serious challenges. So is what we're saying here is that he's very likely to win the nomination mm -hmm. and the way that he's winning shows him to be a very weak general election candidate. He's likely to win the nomination the way George H.W. Bush was still likely to win the nomination after Pat Buchanan went to New Hampshire and almost knocked him out. Uh, you know, so, and then George H.W. Bush did Lost. win the nomination. Yeah, he won the nomination and, and then got shot. And his the presidency yeah. was over. Yeah, yeah, to put it in a sentence, there's a difference between being feared within your party and appealing or popular within the nation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, if New Hampshire is the avatar for what independent voters want and would choose, uh, you know, given the option, given the fact that anyone could play mm -hmm. in that independent side, uh, Nikki Haley beat Donald Trump among independents by something like 40, vo for, you know, 40 percentage points. Now, I don't know if Nikki Haley won by 40 percentage points, but I will say this, New Hampshire is sort of a cross section uh, miniature of what the general election is going to be. You have independent and unregistered people who were allowed to vote across party lines in New Hampshire. So a lot, what you ended up seeing was a lot of people for Nikki Haley. But then when asked if you were going to vote for Nikki Haley or Joe Biden in a general election, this is what they said. Nikki Haley. And why did you vote for Nikki Haley? Uh, it's a vote against Trump. Uh, I think it would be better to have her against Biden in the uh, elections than it would be Trump and her. Do you consider yourself generally independent, Republican, or Democrat? Uh, Democrat. So when you undeclared, you voted for Nikki Haley. If it was Nikki Haley against Joe Biden in a general election, who are you voting for? Joe Biden. So there you have it. The closer numbers that you saw, even though Donald Trump did end up ultimately winning New Hampshire by 11 percentage points, which we'll get into in a second, is actually the biggest number that someone has ever won the state of New Hampshire. But nonetheless, you saw even 11 points because of the fact that there is there were unregistered and independents who were ultimate Democrats who would vote for Joe Biden in a general election if Nikki Haley was a Republican nominee, still vote for Nikki Haley because of the disdain for Trump. Now, I'm not saying that's the wrong thing to do, but Republicans need to get their house in order when it comes to unifying the party going into the election because when you have a national general election, you have everybody voting. Everybody's gonna be voting. You need to get the people who are going to be voting for Nikki Haley on your side if you're Donald Trump's campaign. You need to be doing that. You're not going to be able to generate the amount of numbers unless you do. The people in New Hampshire, clearly more college educated than in, Ohio, than in Iowa. You had Iowa was very corn fed, very salt of the earth, hardworking, blue collar Americans. And you had a lot more of the college educated white liberals who are living in New Hampshire. And you saw that in the polls. So Trump is going to have to find a way to pull those voters back. That is not a good sign for a sitting former, a former president of the United States who, again, wants to be seen as president. Yes, he will beat her in South Carolina. But let's not forget that one of the things that Joe Biden did was to remake the calendar such that he was not on the ballot in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. still mopped up Dean Phillips in New Hampshire when he wasn't even on the ballot as a write-in candidate. Yes, Donald Trump will likely win South Carolina, Nikki Haley's home state. Joe Biden might win it by more because that state is built for Joe Biden, just like on the Republican side, it's built for Donald Trump. So tonight, the winner, if you want to look at all of the metrics for a general election, the winner tonight is Joe Biden, mm -hmm. who won in New Hampshire decisively as a write-in, who is going to win decisively in South Carolina. And the story that Donald Trump thinks he's going to get out of South Carolina, Joe Biden will get one of equal value to him. Uh, and in the end, he's got a better story to tell in November because he's not facing 91 criminal counts. <laughs> yeah. I love how she says that at the end. Well, he's not facing 91 counts. Folks, I'm going to do it to you. I'm going to point this out and everybody needs to listen to what I'm about to say. The only way that Donald Trump does not become the nominee for the Republican Party is if outside forces, also known as court cases, and nefarious actors are able to prevent him from being on the ballot. The American people, the people who would be voting for Donald Trump, will decisively 
have him as their nominee, barring those nefarious actors getting their way. And Vivek talked about this in his speech on Fox News last night. He said very specifically that Nikki Haley is not going to be the candidate. She's only in there for her own gain. And ultimately, if Trump is not to be the nominee, it's because of one reason and one reason only. And this is what Joy Reid's talking about right now. He's got 91 different cases, he's got all these different things, and they are specifically put into place. And I'm not just coming up with this out of thin air. You look at when these court dates were scheduled. They're scheduled all around when primaries are. They are designed to pull him off of what his mission is, which is the campaign right now, okay? And that is what happened during his presidency. The entire time, and we've talked about this a lot, he had a presidency where he was still able to get a tremendous amount of things done all the way from the Abraham Accords to fighting inflation. We showed the graphs on that in previous videos. You can take a look back at the videos. He did all these things with two hands tied behind his back because as soon as he got elected, it was Russia, 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 so on and so forth. So the left is genuinely afraid of Trump being able to go in now with the economic climate, with the migrant crisis, with all these different things that the writing has been on the wall for. They're afraid to let Donald Trump do this un handcuffed, if you will, you know, sorry, the pun there, but that's the ultimate goal. So it's interesting to see the way that MSNBC and their panel are covering this versus people who I would consider to be a little bit more objectively truthful. Let's take a look. From the Post Millennial, President Trump breaks record for most votes ever received in New Hampshire primary. President Donald J. Trump scored a decisive victory on Tuesday night in New Hampshire and also set a new record. As renowned pollster Rich Barris points out, Trump demolished the record for most votes ever cast in a presidential candidate in a New Hampshire primary. The record was previously held by Bernie Sanders in 2016. In 2016, Sanders received 152,193 votes, crushing Hillary Clinton. At the time of publication, 152,565 votes were cast for President Trump, with 13% of the votes still yet to be tallied. So this was actually 13% still to be tallied, and he was ahead of Bernie Sanders. Not by much in this margin, but nonetheless. Bernie Sanders in New Hampshire, with New Hampshire voters, that is his space. New Hampshire, Vermont, like though, like New England is Bernie territory. And the fact that Donald Trump was able to get more votes than Bernie Sanders in Bernie Sanders land is very telling in my opinion. Trump triumphed over his only remaining competitor, Nikki Haley. This win serves to further solidify Trump's position as the undisputed front runner in the race for the GOP's 2024 presidential nomination. I've said this before and I'll say it again. You could have called Iowa three weeks ago. You could have called New Hampshire three weeks ago. As of late Tuesday night, the exact margin of Trump's victory awaited confirmation, but the outcome in the Granite State deals a setback to, the, to Haley's attempts to run an anti-Trump coalition made up of independents and Democrats. True, because Nikki Haley, if you guys don't know this, has taken a lot, a lot, a lot of money from Democrats in this campaign. Following Trump's victory, Haley doubled down on staying in the race, assuring her supporters that, quote, this race is far from over. When we get to South Carolina, Donald Trump's going to have a harder time falsely attacking me. The great people of South Carolina know I cut their taxes. They know, they know I signed the toughest illegal immigration bill in the country. They know we passed voter ID and tort reform and ethics reform. And they know we moved 35,000 people from welfare to work. Every time I've run for office in South Carolina, I've beaten the political establishment. Oh, the, the, the cringe waiting for They're applause. They're lined up against me again. That's no surprise. But South Carolina voters don't want a coronation. They want an election. And we're going to give them one. Because we are just getting started. Thank you for the energy. Okay, so there's like five people there. That's usually typical of Nikki Haley. She, I do not want people to be confused by this. At the end of the day, the goal is to defeat the left. The goal is to defeat the radical Marxist left and its ideology that is pervasive across this country and is now starting to take hold from everywhere, from our schools to our military and every place in between. 2024 is a decisive moment and people have used that line in the past, so I believe it's lost its meaning in other elections. But if you look at the grand scheme 
of what the landscape is of the country right now and the different ideologies that are living within it, some very nefarious, and I would go as far as to say evil, which is a word I use extremely reservedly. They're allowed to take hold, and not only that, are propagated by the media and pop culture. So I'd encourage everybody to make sure you stay informed, you do your due diligence on situations, you keep an eye out for breaking news and things that you believe do not align with your moral code from people who are outside of your party as well as inside of your party. That's something that a lot of Republicans tend to forget. We have nefarious actors inside of our own party as well. So keep an eye out, keep yourself aware of what is going on. But listen folks, that's all I got for you today. If you do me a huge favor real quick, hit the like button on the video, the follow button on the channel, the sub button if you're ever on YouTube, and share the show with a friend. It's how we grow around here. And if you find value within this content, be sure to do all three and follow over on Rumble and Twitter as well. Links in the description of the video because we don't know how long we'll be able to be allowed to be on this specific platform as well. You know who you are. But until next time, catch you on the next one.